I raised up the sawn off shotgun, pulled both triggers and shot the man directly in the chest. How on earth has the world come to this when a decent man, a decent young man has got to do this? Well, my name's John and I'll tell you what's unfolded. So, this is my story. Hello. Well, for the purpose of this video, I'm playing a character called John. Now, John is a young man, early 30s, a fit, strong young man. So, you're going to have to use your imagination and visualise a fit, strong young man other than me. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this story. Um, I thought of it a long, long time ago, actually. And I started to write it down. I had a... Before PCs, this is. I had a computer and a printer. And I started to write it down. But I ran into a big snag. And the problem was... When I got three or four pages done, I had to read through it to remind myself what I'd already written. So, I reached a point when it took too long to read through what I'd written, so the projects had been shelved for many, many years. However, now we've got this medium to use, I've suddenly realised the other day that we can do it this way. So it's going to be a video story, right? It's going to be like an audio book, but it's going to be a video book. The reason for that is, uh, much as I would like to have a few million pounds budget and some actors and a few hundred extras and enough money to build a town that I can burn down you know, you get the idea right, you get the idea so unfortunately or fortunately, whichever you like um, you're going to have to sit and listen to me telling the story and it, I can only say it's a bit like making a film of World War Three, but told like someone looking out the window. That's the best I can do. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. By the way, by the way, um, it's all in here. It's all in my head. I've got a few notes jotted down, but that's all, so it's ad lib. So you must excuse me if I repeat myself, or make mistakes, or... Whatever, you know, it's just uh, simply me telling a story. But I think, well, I hope that you will enjoy it regardless. So we'll make a start. In 2019, China was sending rockets up to space, manned rockets. And they landed on an asteroid. And uh, the problem is, um, this, when the, the uh, astronaut went for a spacewalk, he didn't know, but there was a very serious, a very evil virus that he got attached to his spacesuit. And he brought it back to Earth with him. Well, the problem is, because of budget cuts, 
um, the decontamination procedure wasn't carried out properly. And this very nasty and evil virus escaped into humanity. We now fast forward about a year and uh, this virus had spread. It was spread all around the world. It had also mutated and it was getting worse. So what happened was all the countries sort of closed the borders and what well, some did. Um, it was called lockdown. People were asked to stay in the homes and everything else. And because this virus came from outer space, the problem is, although we've been around for 200,000 years, we've had natural immunity to every virus there is on this planet. However, okay, you get a cold. Yeah, sometimes they're overwhelmed. But we actually have. That's how we were made. But this time, this virus didn't. Now, here's a very, very important point. Very important point. Because this is the first time that mankind knows for certain there is life beyond Earth. And that is really the moral of this film. So at first, everybody was uh, trying to flee the cities. Of course, very, very quickly, the roads became gridlocked. With a crash or two, but mainly just gridlocked. Cars running out of fuel. And so, um, there were plenty, the, the motorways, all the roads, and by the way, this is set in England, all the, well, Britain, all the roads were gridlocked and ground to a halt. Now, you already know this can happen. So, there were an awful lot of cars left on the road. Now, the drivers, knowing they would be stuck there because there was still... Um, radio stations, there was still news at this point and uh, so they could hear on the radio that it was gridlocked and what was happening and the big disaster and so they had to, well they abandoned the cars, just left them, just turned the ignition off, got out, probably shut the door, probably not and left them, which of course was very good for me. So the first thing I needed was transport. Now I remember all the roads are uh, gridlocked and unusable, but there was still a lot of what we know as Chelsea tractors, what mumsies take the little darlings to school in. And there were lots of these abandoned in all the roads in Britain. So the first thing I had to do was to get some transport. I could find one of these with fuel in. Uh, the keys were in the ignition and they were unlocked. So there was no problem starting them or anything like that. So anyway, um, Oh, by the way, luckily for me, I wasn't at home, which was in a small town, when this happened. I'd actually been visiting a friend in the country, in a remote house. So, that's how, more or less, that's my first bit of luck, how I escaped. You know, very grateful as well, obviously. So anyway, um, there was plenty of transport and there was plenty of all-terrain vehicles, as they're called. 
that uh, with fueling that would take me some distance you know so we could travel around well on one of the roads and this is where fortune played a major major part in my survival um, I needed to stop and get another vehicle so I'm travelling along the fuel gauge is just on nearly on empty and I see another vehicle similar vehicle so I stopped and went to it well as I opened the door I thought I heard a cry for help so I looked round and there wasn't anybody about anyway I listened for a bit there was another cry for help and I went across and I found this nice young woman that had been trapped in a car through no fault of her own because someone had hit it in the side it's called a T-bone it had not been a heavy one but it had trapped her feet and she couldn't free her feet she wasn't injured but she couldn't free her feet she'd been there a few hours so obviously I opened the door and a couple of uh, a few vehicles up there was a works van so I went to that and found some tools in it and I managed to free her and so very early on I had a partner in crime a nice young female now it turned out I could not have got anyone more suitable her name was Alexandria Alex for short but we will now call her Jane so it's me and Jane what's that young man Jane and I I'm telling this story I'm allowed poetic license just sit down and be quiet sorry about that so anyway me and Jane went to back to the vehicle I was using which had still half a tank of fuel in and we carried on and uh, where were we going I don't know we had to survive right so the first thing you need for survival is food and water the second thing you need is a place to stay now remember because everybody had fled the homes there was no shortage of food um, there were, you know it it was just easy right in the first instance in fact in the first two months it was very easy there was no shortage of food there was you know tin food um, water was would have been a problem uh, but we had another hood stroke look that we found a disused house with its own well and uh, this was a proper well right not a pump on the system one with a proper water filter and everything so that was another major stroke look and it's why I'm here to tell you the tale so anyway we found this house and we hold up there for a little while I don't know how long a oh, month something like that and we got to know each other quite well well it turned out Jane had grown up on a farm she wasn't a farmer's daughter but uh, she lived locally and spent a time on the farm and the farmer had sort of adopted her um, and became a friend he also had paid for her to go to an engineering college an engineering college so she had the grounding the same as me I mean I couldn't have wished for anyone better plus the fact there's several things about her she had lots and lots of common sense she was very bright uh, she was a tough cookie because 
In my past, I'd been a banger and stock car driver. And she'd also done some banger racing. So, you know, she was a tough cookie and could drive. And, well, her skills were better than most men. But to add to the pleasure, she was drop dead gorgeous. She really was. So, that's my major, major stroke of luck and the re another reason why I'm here to tell the tale. So me and Jane set off together and as I said we found this house and we managed to survive for a while. Now the towns were an absolute no-go. It was just rioting and killing and fires. You just could not go near a town. However after only a few weeks, most of the people had either succumbed to the virus or had killed each other. So within the space of, I don't know how long it was, I just can't remember. <laughs> it's a while ago. But probably six weeks, most of the world's population had perished. And so what do you do? Well... This is really where the story starts. <laughs>